the Sigma DP1, 2 and 3 Merrill were a set of dedicated APS-C cameras, each sporting a different fixed prime lens, paired to a novelty Foveon X3 sensor. A unique imager capable of generating color images, without an interpolator buyer arrangement, it offers new levels of sharpness, details and most importantly color reproduction, unmatched by the standard technology used by most of the market. Using the silicon property of allowing different wavelengths to reach different layers within the wafer, it stacks three different photo cells, R, G and B, to measure each pixel color value, thus making do without the need of an anti-alias filter for different files straight from the camera. So each camera offers a different f2.8 lens, 19, 30 or 50mm macro, each with a 46 megapixel imager that generates final 15 megapixel photos. While yes, all cameras offer sluggish performance from an incapable processor to deal with so much data, sluggish focusing performance based on a contrast detection system, and suffer from file incompatibility as no software other than Sigma's own can process these images, the results did find a place on my kit. At 122 by 66 by 58 mm of about 300 grams each camera, varying accordingly to each lens, I will talk about all DP1, 2 and 3 as a single camera. It really just changed the lens. I also won't bother you with its usability. It's straightforward, mostly point and shoot, with all manual exposure operation, yes, but not much else. No, there is no usable video function, as even the dual true tube processors couldn't handle larger files than the SD resolution. No, there is no optical viewfinder nor electronic, being operated by a paltry 3-inch LCD display that suffers from rendering aliasing and a simple, almost limited interface. And no, the performance is hard to even recommend these cameras. They take their time to boot, at about 2 seconds. They take their time to focus, at at least 1 second to see contrast and lock. And the box itself supplied it with 2 batteries each, as a single charge can handle 80. Yes, about 80 shots. It barely works. You have been warned. What does make these cameras worth is indeed the image quality, that we can break down to each lens, and the overall sensor performance that shines under controlled exposure. You can't just point and shoot and hope for the best. So let's begin with the DP1. The 19mm f2.8 lens is the hardest to design of them all, with a somewhat wide angle covering the large APS-C sensor on the smaller design of them all with the wider images. The main issue here is, as usual with wide-angle lenses, the corner performance and lateral chromatic aberrations that make for a good recommendation in stopping down the lens to f5.6 or f8 in order to truly see the benefits of the raw image details. The DP2, on the other hand, generate probably the best images I can get on my kit today. This is the real deal. If you want to truly feel what a Foveon X3 imager is capable of, get the DP2. Its 50mm equivalent lens used a simpler 8 element in 6 rubes optical formula paired to the same fluorite piece, but makes do without any chromatic aberration, nor loss of sharpness around the edges. And finally, the DP3 is the hardest to judge. Its longer 50mm lens is equivalent to 75mm, proper for portraits and macro shots, with its shortest overall depth of field. So this lens makes for some questionable bokeh and graded transitions that go opposite to the idea of the sharpest Foveon images. But what really shines on this review is indeed the Foveon X3 files, officially the sharpest and most detailed I've ever used, with no competition from buyer systems, BCCD or CMOS, nor Fuji's x -Tran. It's simply bizarre to see the stacked RGB sensor in action. The first highlight is indeed the detail reproduction. With no interpolation and no anti-aliasing filter, the images are simply too sharp, matching the display pixel pitch or the printer ink nozzle. It's simply surreal. We can clearly see the details around the edges of detail edges, making for what some people call tridimensional images. The micro contrast is so high it feels lifelike. Second, the colors are also incredible, with ink deep blues, darker than usual as it's the closest to the sensor surface, thus intact from the other color filters and also used to render true black and white images, just like Leica's black and white only cameras. 
and other colors are also true to life that can actually generate some portrait issues. As Sigma didn't really mess with the color science, skin tones do look a bit brown or orange or pink or white as they are in real life. It's much different from the warmer pinkish yellow tones we got from Canon, for example, but greater to handle darker skin tones. You must see it to believe it. And finally, some other performance issues occur, like the noise seen from the stacked RGB system and weird flaring reflections from inside the sensor itself. The ISO performance is simply poor. Except from the base ISO 200, I can't recommend any of the 400, 800, up to 6400 that not only suffer from noise, it can actually see any image. And Sigma's software processor isn't the best at dealing with the dynamic range of Fovion files. Your batting shooter bracket exposures that will be composed later in Photoshop than to handle these files like a regular raw image. The data just isn't there. So who should buy into so many issues? I kept my cameras to shoot special files for art archival and do take the DP2 to most landscape trips. No other camera can match its performance for sunsets and color reproduction. But I do recommend it for anyone looking for something truly special. Some of the magic went away with today's Sigma Quattro cameras that solved some of the issues with the Fovion on ISO in exchange for sharpness. So if you know what you're doing, this can be something extra on your kit. Just take your time to be wowed by its images and nice shooting.